As soon as TJ Lane walked in, he was executing his plan, taking off his button-down shirt to reveal this, a white t-shirt with the word killer scribbled on it, showing it off with a smug smile on his face. He wore one like it the day of the shootings. Imagine you being a kid going to school when all of a sudden you hear on the intercom that there is a shooter in the building and everyone needs to hide. That's what the students of Chardon High School of Ohio had to endure all the way back in 2012 when an evil juvenile age 17 by the name of Thomas T.J. Lane came to the high school with many guns, going as far as to the point of killing three students and injuring three others, one of whom sustained several serious injuries that have resulted in permanent paralysis, to the point of doing this awful act whilst his sister was enrolled in the same high school possibly putting her in danger. I'm in shock as we all comforted one another. I heard a police officer outside of the window say that they suspected TJ Lane. When those words hit me, I shook and cried and denied that all this could be true. A teacher then brought me into the hall while I waited to be questioned. I witnessed my peers being rolled out on stretchers right past me, something no one should ever have to see. To this day, those to this day, those images haunt me and keep me from being able to go to school, even movie theaters and social events. Not until around two that day was it confirmed that the shooter was my brother. It may be hard for some to understand, but I love my brother and hope that wherever the sentencing and life takes him in the future, that he can touch others' lives in a positive way from a point of view that only he can give. I hope this message of peace, forgiveness, and understanding carries with TJ to a place where those traits are scarce. And I hope that we all can work towards peace and compassion in the future. Words have a powerful impact, positive and negative. We all need to keep that in mind. By this, I'm not just addressing hateful words on the internet, but the words of the media. As kids, we are taught not to bully, but to me, this is just a bigger form. As a child growing up in this house, along with my little sister, Sierra, things have been said about my family that are very hurtful and untrue. It's painful to see how these words affect my family. In contrast, we are very thankful for the prayers that go out to us and the positive encouragement that will get us through this difficult time. Trying to come to terms with everything that's happened, what I keep coming back to is that hate will only generate more hate but forgiveness and compassion will bring peace and understanding. The brother in the courtroom and that did this was not the brother I knew. What could bring somebody to do such a horrifying act? One word, bully. On the morning of February 27, 2012, at approximately 7.30 a.m., Chardon High School was open in the morning before classes, with many students typically gathered in the cafeteria, some to get breakfast. As a student sits down in the cafeteria looking nothing out of the ordinary, he suddenly quickly stands up and starts firing with a 22 caliber he stole from his uncle, causing chaos throughout the school. Thomas Lane, being teased regularly, goes after his rivals. He shoots four male students at a table, wounding another student, narrowly missing his head and grazing his ear, then shoots a female student after being chased out of the school by two hero teachers, Joseph Ricci and Frank Hall, who happened to be at the right place at the right time. Joseph Ricci, who at the time was teaching math class reports that, after hearing gunshots in the hallway, he and his class quickly went into lockdown. As they hear moans outside of the classroom, Ricci puts on a bulletproof vest and quickly opens the door and drags wounded student Nick Walsack into the classroom, where Ricci performs first aid on the student, saving his life after he was shot multiple times in his neck, arm, back, and cheek, in which resulted in paralysis for the poor student. Now we go to Frank Hall, who was said to have charged straight at Lane, who was aiming his gun straight at him. Students say he always cared for them, as shown by his actions. After hearing these events conspire, a troubled student calls 911 after running outside for safety. 911, where is your emergency? We just had we just had a shooting at our school. We need to get out of here. Oh okay. my God. Okay, ma'am. We got a school shooting. Ma'am, what school? Chardon High 
High School. Chardon High School? Yes, ma'am. All right. Can you go get the administration? Okay. Everyone's running away, so where is I don't know with the gun. I don't know. He was in the cafeteria and everyone just started running. Do you see the shooter? <laughs> no, I didn't. I just saw, like, the gun. Okay, did you see the gun? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now listen to me. Listen to me. Where are you at? I'm outside the school right now. We hear the, the sirens. What a true tragedy. That must have been the scariest day for her. After all the threats were gone, five students were hospitalized. Daniel Palmer tour, Russell King and Demetrius Hewlin were flown by helicopter to Metro Health Medical Center in Cleveland, Ohio, approximately 31 miles by road. Joy Rickers and Nick Walsack were taken to the local Hillcrest Hospital. Nate Muller was superficially injured by a bullet grazing his right ear and did not need hospital treatment. After all of these events and after learning that T.J. Lane had done all of this, law enforcement officials had surrounded a house belonging to Thomas Michael Lane Jr., the suspect's father, searching the home of Lane's maternal grandparents in Chardon Township, in which Lane frequently visited on weekends, and a place where Lane used target practice. According to student witnesses, Lane had a personal rivalry with King, one of his victims. Witness Nate Muller said that King had recently started dating Lane's former girlfriend. Other student witnesses said that Lane appeared to aim specifically at King that morning, indicating that he was the first to be shot of all of the students at his table. The students said that King had previously threatened to beat Lane up and that Lane had taken up weightlifting in the previous year to prepare to fight King. Friends of Lane described him as just a normal teenage boy, being in complete shock from the events that occurred. This incident that occurred overall was just a tragedy, making us all wish that the world was just more peaceful and loving. Hopefully, in the future, when we see signs like this one and see somebody going through something, always try to help them out and lead them down the right path. Because cases like this one can turn an innocent kid that wants to draw pictures or play outside to a kid that lives in a life of mischief and crime. It's never too late to do the right thing, as something as little as greeting them in the hallway or just talking to them can prevent tragedies like this one. If a kid is being bullied and being picked on, always try to do the right thing and stick up for that kid, as you never know what they may be going through mentally or physically. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. See ya.